It is now time for member statements. The member from Leeds, Grenville. Thanks, uh, Speaker. I rise today to pay a tribute to uh, former Mayor Frank Kinsella. Uh, Leeds, Grenville lost a, a champion when Mayor Frank, as he was affectionately known, passed away this month at age 75. An educator, director of education, Rotarian, councillor, and mayor of Leeds and the Thousand Islands, Frank left an indelible mark on countless lives. Frank knew that being a leader could be difficult, but he never flinched in the face of a challenge. Even those who disagreed with him never doubted that Frank had his community's best interest at heart. Indeed, even after he lost a bid for re-election in 2010, the community turned to Frank in a time of crisis two years later, and he was reappointed mayor. Frank held no grudge. He rolled up his sleeve and he inspired others around him to be better. And with Frank leading the way, Speaker, they were better. I had the privilege of knowing Frank as a friend, and later he was my boss because he, he hired me as a CAO for uh, the township. And I could tell you, Frank was the same behind closed doors as he was in public. He wanted to build a stronger, a more connected community by empowering people to step forward and do great things. Frank set out to be a community builder, and that's exactly what he leaves as his legacy. On behalf of everyone in Leeds Grenville and the province of Ontario, I want to extend uh, my most sincere and deepest condolences to Frank's wife, Mary Lou, uh, his children, and his grandchildren. We're all so blessed that they shared Frank with us. We loved him a lot, Speaker, and we're going to miss him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further members' statements? The member from Essex. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. I am so happy to uh, use my member statement today to give a shout out to our province's agricultural workers and our farmers. Uh, today, uh, obviously, being uh, two days after uh, the, the, the first day of spring of this year, uh, we know that farmers are busy in the preparation for planting uh, the food in which we all uh, appreciate, enjoy, and are sustained by. Of course, we can't uh, uh, forget the economic impact that farmers play in Ontario uh, being our number two uh, industry in the province, contributing uh, billions of dollars to our GDP every year. Uh, and of course, the role they play in, in the small communities and rural communities in which they, they operate. Speaker, uh, in my region, Windsor and Essex, we have one of the longest growing seasons, 212 days per year. And of course, our uh, region is home to North America's largest greenhouse industry with over 1,700 acres under glass or plastic with three th uh, sorry, uh, 328,000 acres of farmland. Windsor-Essex generates $1.2 billion from agriculture activity. And of course, Essex is also uh, top southwestern Ontario when it comes to employment with 18,487 full-time equivalents uh, in the sector, only Niagara Region is close second with 18,400. Speaker, thank you to the farmers who are busy preparing the food that we're uh, going to enjoy. We appreciate uh, and uh, acknowledge their efforts and look forward to supporting them. Have a safe and prosperous and productive season. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statement, the member from Mississauga, Brampton South. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to recognize 12 women who recently received Leading Women Building Communities Awards at an event in Mississauga, Brampton South, this past Saturday. These awards celebrate those women who demonstrate exceptional leadership in working to improve the lives of others through their work, activism, and volunteer activities. They are role models for everyone in our communities, and especially for young women. Despite a lot of progress for women in Ontario, they are still underrepresented in private business and leadership roles. For too often, women are victims of gender-based harassment and violence. These women are inspirational, worth celebrating, and I thank them for their service to our community. Congratulations, UD Young, Helen Burroughs, Puneet Chabla, Angela John, Lillian Kwok, Anna Mazurkowitz, Arifa Mazafar, Nav Singh, Norma Nicholson, Neera Rajpal, Anu Srivastava, and Arpna Vora. Kudos to all of you. I'm very proud of your work. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Haldeman Norfolk. Yeah, Speaker. Uh, today I planned on responding to the uh, minister's comments on food and beverage Ontario's uh, taste for the future campaign, but uh, uh, the minister's statement has been cancelled. I, I want to start by quoting Norm Beale, CEO of Food and Beverage Ontario. We're launching a major campaign called Taste Your Future because there aren't enough people trained in our industry to take these jobs. We need young people and new Canadians interested in our sector for jobs ranging from millwrights to food scientists and uh, marketing people. And uh, just further to uh, CEO Beale's numbers, he indicates food and beverage sectors, 132,000 direct jobs, there's another 172,000 indirect full-time Positions. Uh, he touts it as the largest manufacturing processing sector in the province, bigger than automotive, and a sector that generates $70 billion in uh, revenue. And following the, uh, the recession, and we know Ontario was hard hit primarily because of automotive, yet the food and beverage sector grew by 11 per cent from 2007 to 2000. And, uh, 12. So we're, we're second only to Chicago. I just wanted to point this out. I'm not sure why the, the statement was uh, cancelled. I don't know. We've, we've seen a cut to the ministry's budget. Maybe that was one of the reasons, but I, I'll just leave that with the it legislature. Was probably Thank you, Speaker. Further member statements? The member from London, uh, London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today to recognize two exemplary London companies that received global recognition this month for ethical business practices and for redefining business success. On March 4th, London tech firm R Traction announced its official designation as London's first certified B Corporation. B Corp is an international program to recognize for profit companies that meet rigorous standards of social and environmental performance, accountability, and transparency. In other words, companies that use business as a force for good. Since its founding in 2001, our traction has been making a difference for its clients, its employees, and the London community. As a certified B Corp, our traction's two brands, Digital Ellipsis and Engine 74, have joined more than 1,400 certified B Corps from 42 countries and over 120 industries. The same week, on March Seventh, the U.S.-based Ethisphere Institute named 3M one of the world's most ethical companies for a third year in a row for its ethical business standards, its alignment of principle with action, and its impact on shaping future industry standards. Londoners are very proud of 3M's long history in our community. Since 1951, London has been home to 3M's Canadian operations, and 3M employs almost 1,000 employees at its head office and manufacturing plant. To earn the designation as an ethical company, 3M was, ass was assessed in multiple categories, and uh, this this year, 131 honorees were named, spanning 21 countries, five continents, and more than 45 industries. Congratulations to our Traction CEO, David Bilson, and to Paul Madden, 3M Canada's President and General Manager. I'm proud of the leadership shown by London firms to demonstrate that good ethics is good business. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stiglitz, the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today, uh, I would like to uh, pay tribute to the innocent people that were uh, killed and slaughtered in cold blood in Brussels this morning, and the people of Belgium who saw this act of terrorism uh, rip their city apart, their airport, innocent people going to work this morning on the metro in Brussels, men, women, children were killed by these sadistic, cowardly terrorists. And just to let the people know in Belgium and all over the world that we stand together with those that are totally in opposition to this type of cowardly, dastardly act that occurred this morning, and that this is not something that we condone or want to see repeated and that we should encourage all citizens in every country in every part of this great country of Canada to stand up to this cowardly terrorism that rips apart this world and 
contributes to nothing but destruction and hate, and that it's our time to stand in solidarity with the people of Brussels and the people of Belgium. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. The member's statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. This spring, along with the wonderful member from Grey Bruce Owen Sound, I had the privilege of attending the Grey Bruce first tapping ceremony at Klein's Maple Syrup near Mild May. And this particular event highlights the beginning of the maple syrup season. And I must say, Mr. Walker particularly uh, showcased his knack for hammering in the spigot. Something to be seen, ladies. Wow. Yes. But uh, in all seriousness, in terms of the maple syrup season, uh, since its earliest settlers arrived along the coastline of Lake Huron, the sugaring season has brought together family and friends to celebrate the transition from winter to er the early days of spring. Many of us share fond memories of visiting our local sugar shack to collect sap, enjoying the early springtime, and devouring taffy and pa pancakes at our local festivals. This season is particularly meaningful for farmers in my community as it marks the first harvest of the season and the start of an agricultural year. In addition to its cultural importance, the maple syrup industry is important to Ontario's economy. Speaker. Last year alone, the syrup producers in my region produced an impressive 3.9 million gallons of syrup and contributed $41 billion to our province's GDP. Even better, the maple syrup industry has only expanded to grow as Ontarians seek a healthier alternative to traditional sugars. Mr. Speaker, maple syrup is one of Ontario's most iconic products, and I encourage all my colleagues in the House to visit their local sugar shack or their local festival and enjoy and celebrate one of our delicious snacks in this province. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements, the member for Ottawa Orléans. Merci, Monsieur le Président. This year in Thank you. Mr. I was delighted to host a breakfast event in Orléans, which was such a success with over 100 great women from our community in attendance. The objective was to meet and celebrate these women, their work and successes, while giving them an opportunity to engage and get to know one another. Our event represented Canada's 2016 team of women's empowerment leads to equality. This is why I took the opportunity to present this year's Leading Women Building Communities Recognition Awards to 14 deserving women. Je suis tellement fière comme député d'Orléans d'avoir pu reconnaître I'm so proud to have been able to recognize 14 women who contributed a lot through leadership in our community. Congratulations to each of them and also I would like to name them Anne-Marie C, Colleen Dupree-Strong, Jennifer Babe, Karina Potvin, Cassandra Tanouri, Kelsey Lett, Lisa Wilton, Michelle De Rocher, Rachel Lecourt, Sandra Stefanik, Teresa Whitmore, Victoria Powell, and Yasmin Fathers. Thank you and congratulations to all these wonderful women. Merci. Further member statements. The member from Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just want to say a few words on. Uh, uh, Rob Ford, not as the mayor, um, but as a human being and as a person that I knew on city council. Rob was first elected to city council in the year 2000, and uh, I was a councillor at that time as well, and we hit it off pretty well right from the beginning. Um, I remember I, his grandfather lived in my riding, and when his grandfather passed away, he came to me and said, can you say a few words about my grandfather? I said, sure, Rob. So at the start of the council meeting, I said a few words about his grandfather. And I looked across from me, and I could see Rob's eyes swelling up and tears coming down his eyes. After I finished my speech, he came over, shook my hand, and was not able to speak. He was so emotionally moved by the fact that I had spoken about his grandfather, a very sensitive and emotional person. And uh, I remember as well that uh, we were debating the budget one day in, in the council, and I said, I don't want my Metro Pass. I don't, I don't want it. I'll pay my own way on the subway. And I started arguing with some members of council. All of a sudden, Rob st stood up and goes, I don't want mine either. It's, it's wrong that we get free Metro passes. And he became more passionate than I did. And it was uh, just to see him in his passion and the way he felt strongly about an issue. And he didn't care whether he was on the right or wrong side. He, he did that. And with the permission of the speaker, I may go a few minutes overhand, but uh, I just wanted to say that uh, when I was elected, um, I wanted to be chair of the uh, admin committee in 2000, the administration committee, which was a big committee. And I, and I phoned him and I said, Rob, can you vote for me tomorrow uh, to support me to become an admin chair? He goes, you can't. You can't phone me. That's illegal. 
And I said, well, it's not illegal. I'm just asking you to vote for me. So he had a friend and a mentor, uh, uh, Doug Holliday, the former uh, member here and a former councillor as well. And Doug, Doug Holliday said to me, uh, uh, don't worry, calm, uh, or, uh, Rob down is going to vote for you. So Rob voted for me and he was on my committee. Uh, on the committee, and uh, he was always uh, opinionated, but honest, and a very emotional uh, human being who loved his job, loved his family, loved his wife, uh, Renata, his children, Stephanie and Doug, very close to his mom, Deanne, uh, and I had many chances to, to meet them and talk to them, and uh, he had birthday parties at his house, and I would go uh, with my wife, and uh, he would uh, get emotional during his birthdays and say, you know, um, thanks for coming to my birthday party and was very happy. So there's another side to him that I'm really going to miss and we're all going to miss. And it's too early perhaps to eulogize him, but I just thought it was appropriate today to say a few words about a wonderful human being who will be missed uh, uh, deeply by his family, his, his, his family, and even us friends of him uh, here at the legislature. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I knew better to cut him off. Um, it's now time for. Re I thank all members for their statements. It's now time for 